the United States needs to officially recognize Louisiana as the music capital of America. I already know some people are going to try to debate me and argue with me in the comments and all that. Hey, I'm dealing with facts. And by the time I'm done with this video, I am going to prove that Tunji, Lil Wayne, is the greatest rapper of all time. I, look, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not going to deal with emotion with this video. This, I'm just going to deal with straight facts. Facts that, that can be supported by Wikipedia, um, Google, uh, Encyclopedia. I'm dealing with facts. All right, so let's just break this down, man. In 1819, jazz music began in an area here in New Orleans called Congo Square. This used to be the major slave block where they brought the slaves in from the Congo, Puerto Rico, to here, and they sold them on this land, and slave owners from all over the country would come to this area here called Congo Square and buy their slaves. Well, in that same area, the slaves were allowed to play their music, and that's where jazz began. That culture, these people created a sound that centuries later is still being used around the world now. If you like John Coltrane, Miles Davis, or even some of today's greats like Robert Glasper, then you got to give that credit to New Orleans because that sound was originated right here in Louisiana. Opera. If you want to go opera. Now, we know they were going to tell you that the first opera sang on stage was an opera called Flora. I think it happened in South Carolina. Um, but if you go do research, they are going to tell you that America's first city of opera for, as, as entertainment was New Orleans, 1796. Other cities had a, an opera show here and there. But New Orleans was the first city in America to offer opera as entertainment, meaning that you can come here and get a, a, a an opera performance any night of the week. We have theaters up and down the block, you know what I'm saying? Like, we know Broadway now, but you know, this was the, the root of life here in, because we had the French connection here. So, you know, when, when, when the uh, French singers would, 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 would be shipped to America and they would come to America, it's New Orleans where they would go and do their shows at. This was the first opera entertainment city in America. Go Google it. Just go Google America's first opera entertainment city and watch this don't say New Orleans. I'm just giving you facts. Just facts, you heard me, just facts. You know, if we want to go gospel, let's just go gospel. You know, gospel, the mother of gospel is Mahalia Jackson. Now, I know you're going to say, well, probably was a whole lot of other gospel singers. Maybe so. Oh, yeah, well, you know, it's documented that Mahalia Jackson is the mother of gospel, rooted in in, 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 in slavery, you know, these songs, these hymns of singing praises to God came out of a struggle. And these songs spread around to other plantations around the country, around the world, you know, and they became these hymns of our praise and our cries to God, which created gospel music. You know, now I'm not saying Mahalia Jackson created gospel, but what I'm saying is the sound of gospel that you know today began with Mahalia Jackson. Just facts. Just facts. Just facts. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just giving you facts. All right, while we're talking about gospel, let me just say this. Bishop Paul Martin does not get the credit that he is due for the impact that he has made on the sound of today's gospel music. I'm just giving you facts. I call him an OG. I say, man, why you be calling Bishop an OG? Because he is. He's an original godfather. Ah, I made it up. Uh, but um, let me just say this. Your favorite gospel artists today, Tasha Cobbs, William Murphy. Well, these artists came through a system, an incubator, called the Full Gospel International Fellowship. That's Louisiana. The Full Gospel International Fellowship was created in New Orleans, Louisiana. There was no such thing as black charismatic worship before Full Gospel. Kojic gave you... The Black Baptists had a lot of the choirs, the deep spirituals. Full gospel introduced charismatic worship. And I'm going to tell you this too. See, I grew up in the 80s and the 90s where most of your churches had three choirs. You had the adult choir, the youth choir, and then sometimes they put them together and created what they call a mass choir. I took y'all back with them. And you know, during that time, all the, the gospel was choirs. But full gospel introduced something that changed the way we have church today. They introduced praise teams. Like every church that you go to now got a praise team. 
that was pretty much invented by Bishop Paul Martin's Full Gospel International Fellowship. That sound was invented. That's New Orleans. All right, so y'all know Tyler Perry, right? Everybody knows Tyler Perry's from New Orleans. But what a lot of people don't know is that Tyler Perry's first stage plays were gospel stage plays. And they were birthed out of Bishop Paul Martin's church. He was a member there. The church was the base. That's where Madea came from. I'm just giving y'all facts, man. Facts of what we produce in this state. Now we go to hip hop. We all know that hip hop began in New York City. However, I'm just going to argue and say that I believe the South, number one, changed hip hop. Shout out to ATL, Outkast, Goodie Mob. Shout out to Texas, DJ Screw, Rap A Lot, J Prince, you know, UGK, you know what I'm saying? New Orleans, Louisiana, changed the way hip hop was presented. This was the city where artists sold millions of records out of their trunk and forced major labels to make major deals, deals they had never done before. Had never done before. The sound of cash money and no limit records. This sound, Beats by the Pound, produced a lot of the music with uh, No Limit, and Manny did cash money. But that sound was the collective sound of so much art, so much culture in New Orleans. But see, before Cash Money Records and No Limit, there was bounce here in New Orleans. Yeah, I know y'all know Big Frida now. You know, and, and Big Frida is the queen of bounce, rightfully so. But before Big Frida, you know, there was Sissy Noby. There was Katie Red, Lady Red, Deja Red, Magnolia Shorty. We had Lil Elk, Get the Gap. We had Josephine Johnny, Hot Boy Ronald. I mean, I could go down the list, you know, of artists, Partners in Crime. You know, I could go down the list. And Partners in Crime is one of the biggest bounce groups of that time. Like, bounce was... To New Orleans and Louisiana, what Go-Go is to D.C., you know, what reggae is to Jamaica, you know, and Bounce was the root of No Limit and Cash Money. Something you got to know about New Orleans in the 90s, Bounce music was the, the heart of uh, inner city New Orleans. There were artists here that didn't care if they got played anywhere else because they were household names right here in Louisiana. I was on the radio during that time, and I'm telling you, I used to do parties with Partners in Crime, and it would be lines, you know, around the building. Not just in New Orleans, but all over the state. I've done parties with Cheeky Black. That's still my dog to this day. I've done parties with Cheeky Black, and I'm telling you, people would come out and pay $20 to, to hear Cheeky Black, and I'm telling you, like, bounce music was so big. DJ Jubilee was like, he was the DJ Khaled of this region for the 90s. Like, I mean, he was the the, the man, you know, I, and I really, you know, before No Limit and before Cash Money, it was Bounce. You know, y'all know Juvenile backed that thing up, but we still know Bounce for the Juvenile. <laughs> if I think about one group in the 90s that I just really used to love, and I, I really believe America missed its chance to feel the energy they brought, that's the Ghetto Twins. The Ghetto Twins were conscious back then. They talked about issues in their music, you know, and just had this this sound, the appearance, everything. They had what it was. I will forever love them girls, man. They're my sisters for real, you know. And I'm just going to say, like, New Orleans had a sound that we didn't care, like, in Louisiana. We didn't care if nobody else liked it. We liked it. <laughs> like, we liked it. Like, you could go to a club in the 90s and the early 2000s in Louisiana and hear nothing but Louisiana music for two or three hours in the club. <laughs> Bounce music has been around for a long time. The word twerking, we used to call it pee popping, but we're going to take the word twerking that actually began in New Orleans. It's documented. The very first time the word twerking was used in a song was DJ Jubilee, the Godfather Bounce. DJ Jubilee. In the 80s. Now, everybody in the world knows what twerking is. That's New Orleans hip hop. Wayne. Tunchi is the GOAT. And we can do this back and forth all day long. We really could. We, re we really could about who is who because there are so many rappers that, you know, are great lyricists and great rappers. But I'm going to give you one fact. And if you can prove me wrong, I'll rest my case. But this is why Tune is the GOAT. Tune is the only rapper that's still relevant today that has been rapping professionally since 12 years old and has never had an album on the platinum. I'm waiting for you to prove me wrong. I'm waiting for you to prove me wrong. 
I'm waiting for you to prove me wrong. I'm waiting for somebody to prove me wrong. He's the only rapper alive today that has been rapping professionally since, tw keep in mind, he was rapping before that. But his first professional album came out at 12 years old. And he's still relevant today. There would be no Drake without Toon. There would be no Nicki Minaj without Toon. You gotta give that man his props. And lyrically, whoo, dude ain't slacked. Dude ain't slack. Now, if we want to talk about the most relevant rapper of all time, I'm going to have to go with Snoop Dogg on that. And I know y'all going to argue with that. That's a whole other video. But Snoop Dogg has remained relevant for almost four decades now. You know, the boy got coffee. The boy got cereal. The boy got all of that. Who taught Snoop Dogg business, though? Snoop Dogg went on record and said he didn't know any, he didn't know hardly anything about the music industry or business until he met a dude from New Orleans named Master P. And Master P showed him business. Master P to this day is still probably one of the greatest biggest business moguls of our time. That's Louisiana, man. Let's come off New Orleans and go around. Because see, jig music, laugh if you want to, jig music, you go to any HBCU in America right now. The party don't start until you play some Baton Rouge music. And what I love about our little sister Baton Rouge is that Baton Rouge didn't bite New Orleans. Baton Rouge didn't copy New Orleans. They got their own sound in Baton Rouge, and they rocked that. Jig music? You put on that. Bow, 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 bow. Hey, hey, hey. That thing will tap your family reunion. That thing will tap your repass. <laughs> I don't care where you play it at. Jig music will turn your party up, and it's so creative and dances and everything. That's Baton Rouge. You can go to any HBCU in America, and jig music run that yard, I'm telling you. That's Baton Rouge. If we want to talk about trap music, I got to shout out Kevin Gates. If we want to get on Neo Soul or R&B, don't get me on PJ Martin, Lettucey. Don't get me on Lucky Day. Don't get me on Frank Ocean. These are all Louisiana artists. And I can keep going on and on and on and on and on. Normandy, Luke James, Lloyd, uh, Tedra Moses. These are all artists that are world-renowned. Louisiana. And I'm not saying that other genres, other cities don't have popular artists. Because, God, we know how many popular artists Atlanta has. You got Beyonce coming out of Texas. By the way, she's half Louisiana, too. She said it herself. I mean, I, a lot of people don't even realize that Pimp C from UGK, we know them from Port Arthur, Texas, but Pimp C was actually born in Crowley, Louisiana. I'm just saying. We produce, baby. We produce. We produce. And I'm saying when you take opera, jazz, gospel, bounce, jig, come on, man. I mean, we can go rock and roll. What would rock and roll be without Jerry Lee Lewis? That's Fairy Day, Louisiana. What would rock and roll be like without Fats Domino, New Orleans? That's Louisiana. Let's go to another area that I'm going to have to just give Louisiana credit again. Zydeco is an Arcadiana Creole type music. Other places, they have what they call folk music. Well, in this area, we have Zydeco. That's Lafayette, Lake Charles. That's Arcadiana music right there. And while we're talking about Lafayette, Lake Charles, the Arcadiana music, Cupid Shuffle has become like the world's most famous line dance song. Like, it is like insane. They do it in Germany. They're doing it in, in Africa. Like, they know the Cupid Shuffle everywhere. That's Louisiana. I don't care where you are, man. You're going to get that feel. We... And it's, it's something about Louisiana, like, we just know how to turn up. It ain't nothing else here to do but turn up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we will create a party for you, baby. I'm telling you, we will create a party for you. If you bored in your life, hang with your friends from Louisiana, and they're going to turn you up, I guarantee you. I don't care if you're in college. I don't care if you're at your job. If you're in a workplace and y'all having a bad day or whatever, find a person from Louisiana. They're going to show you how to have a good time. I guarantee you. I guarantee If you live in Texas... Let's, let's, let's do this. Did you know, I'm going to say probably the greatest DJ of our time is DJ Khaled. A lot of people don't know DJ Khaled was born in New Orleans. Miami gets a lot of credit because as his career grew and he grew up, you know, uh, in this music industry, he had moved there. But he always gives credit to his birthplace, New Orleans. I'm going to arguably say that one DJ that is probably responsible for at least a third 
of the success of a lot of rappers right now is Hollywood Bay Bay. That's Shreveport. The term ratchet came from Shreveport, Louisiana. As a matter of fact, they call Shreveport Ratchet City because they made up the term. Man. I already know what I'm going to say going to cause debates and arguments online because it's an ongoing fight in real life right now. Shreveport, Louisiana claims the rights to Southern Soul music. I already know because everybody assumes that Southern Soul came out of Jackson, out of Mississippi or Memphis or whatever. And a lot of times they get Southern Soul confused with blues. We're going to get that to Mississippi and, and, and Memphis, you know, because honestly, that's true. You know, but the phrase Southern Soul, and for those who don't know what Southern Soul is, I know I got a lot of New York followers and people all over the country who may not get it. But in the South, there's a there's this sound called Southern Soul. It's a mixture of blues and R&B. It's like a, a combination. That is trademarked in Shreveport, Louisiana. Blues artists will tell you back in the day, they couldn't, you couldn't make it as a blues artist if you didn't go through Shreveport, Louisiana. It was just that big there. Shreveport controlled the sound of that area from all the way to East Texas. You know, it's like, that was Shreveport's thing. And they began, because Shreveport has a lot of live bands that play blues, they began blending the gap, you know, between R&B and blues and created, and they just started calling it Southern Soul. And they actually trademarked it. Go look at the research. Go look it up. I'm giving you facts. Look up Stan Lewis, Lenny Lewis. You know, look up Garland, Garland Jones. Look up Slack. Slack has written songs right now for over 100 Southern Soul artists. Oh, that's out of Shreveport. And literally, it don't matter who say they own the rights to the name, Shreveport has a trademark. That's another genre that's out of Louisiana. I'm just giving y'all facts, and I know people gonna argue with me because y'all don't like facts. Y'all like fantasy, and I'm giving you facts. So I'm saying the United States needs to recognize Louisiana as the music capital of America. So, I mean, I ain't hating on nobody else. I'm just saying, I'm shouting out my state, shouting out my city. But anyway, if I lied about something or something you don't understand, hit me in the comments, and I will explain it to you because I've given you nothing but facts.